Once upon a time, there was a businessman who was sitting on the beach in a small Italian village. As he sat, taking a brief break from the stress of his daily schedule, he saw a fisherman rowing a small boat back into the harbor. In the boat were a few large fish. Impressed, the businessman asked the fisherman, "How long does it take you to catch so many fish?" To which he replied, "Oh, not so long." The businessman was confused. Why don't you fish for longer to catch even more? More. This is enough to feed my entire family and even offer some to my neighbors. The fisherman said. So what do you do for the rest of your day? Inquired the businessman. The fisherman replied. Well, I've usually have caught my fish by late morning, at which point I go home, kiss my wife, and play with my kids. In the afternoon, I take a nap and read. In the evening, I go to the village to have a drink with my friends, play guitar, sing, and dance into the night. Putting his entrepreneurial hat on, the businessman offered a suggestion. I have a PhD in business. I can help you become much more successful. From now on, you should spend longer at sea and catch as many fish as possible. When you've saved enough money, buy a bigger boat to catch even more fish. From there, you'll soon be able to buy more boats, set up your own company. Build a production plant to can the fish and control distribution, and move to the city to control your other branches. To this, the fisherman asks, "And after that?" The businessman laughs. After that, you'll be able to live like a king, take your company public, float your shares, and be rich. And after that, asks the fisherman once more. After that, you can retire, move to a house by the sea, wake up early in the morning to go fishing, then return home to play with your kids, kiss your wife, take a nap in the afternoon, and join your friends in the village to drink, play guitar, and dance into the night. Puzzled, the fisherman replies, "But isn't that what I'm doing already? Be content with what you have." Do you really need to keep pushing for more? Stress is often a choice. There's joy and peace in simplicity. At the beginning of a new school year, a class teacher stands up in front of her students holding a one hundred dollar bill. She tells them. Put your hands up if you want this money. Every hand in the room goes up. To which the teacher says, "I am going to give this money to someone here, but first, let me do this." She takes the bill and crumples it up in her hands before asking, "Who still wants it?" The hands stay up. The teacher then drops the bill on the floor, stomps and grinds it into the ground. And picks it back up. How about now? She asks again. The hands stay up. Class, I hope you see the lesson here. It didn't matter what I did to this money; you still wanted it because its value stayed the same. Even with its creases and dirtiness, it's still worth one hundred dollars. She continues. It's the same with us. There will be similar times in your life when you're dropped, bruised, and muddied. Yet, no matter what happens, you never lose your value. Life's hardships are inevitable, and we'll all be put through the ringer at some point, often through no fault of our own. Don't let these challenges alter your feelings of self-worth. You'll always be enough. You have something unique and special to give and offer the world. One morning, 
An elderly man was walking along the beach when he noticed a young boy picking something off the sand and throwing it into the sea. As he got closer, the man realized the child was throwing stranded starfishes that had washed up on the shore back into the breaking waves. Approaching the boy, the man asked what he was doing. The starfish will die if they're still on the shore when the sun rises, he replied. Perplexed, the old man said, but that's pointless. There are countless miles of beach and thousands of starfish. It doesn't matter how many you return to the water, you can't make a difference. Unfazed, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish, and tossed it into the sea. It matters to this one, he said. No matter the odds of success or the scale of the challenge, your actions can make a difference. It's better to light a candle than curse the dark. Every little counts. Doing something to make a positive change is always better than nothing. A daughter who was dealing with adversity complained to her father about her life and how things were so hard for her. She did not know how she was going to make it and wanted to give up. She was tired of fighting and struggling. It seemed as one problem was solved a new one arose. Her father, a chef, took her to the kitchen. He filled three pots with water and placed each on a high fire. Soon the pots came to a boil. In one he placed carrots, in the second he placed eggs, and in the last he placed ground coffee beans. He let them sit and boil, without saying a word. The daughter sucked her teeth and impatiently waited, wondering what he was doing. In about twenty minutes he turned off the burners. He fished the carrots out and placed them in a bowl. He pulled the eggs out and placed them in a bowl. Then he ladled the coffee out and placed it in a mug. Turning to her he asked, Daring, what do you see? She replied, Carrots, eggs, and coffee. He brought her closer and asked her to feel the carrots. She did and noted that they were soft. He then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. She smiled as she tasted its rich aroma. She humbly asked, What does it mean, father? He explained that each of them had faced the same adversity, boiling water, but each reacted differently. The carrot went in strong, hard, and unrelenting. But after being subjected to the boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg had been fragile. Its thin outer shell had protected its liquid interior. But after sitting through the boiling water, its inside became hardened. The ground coffee beans were unique, however. After they were in the boiling water, they had changed to the water. Which are you? he asked his daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? A hungry ass finds himself between two equally large and delicious-looking bales of hay. He looks from one to the other and back again, unsure which to choose. This goes on for a long while until, unable to make a decision, the poor old donkey dies of starvation. Take action. Don't linger too long on the precipice of a big or small decision when the outcomes are positive. Save yourself a headache, take a leap of faith, commit, 
and enjoy whatever rewards that come your way, refusing to look back at what could have been. There's a California gold rush story that tells of two brothers who sold all they had and went prospecting for gold. They discovered a vein of the shining ore, staked a claim, and proceeded to get down to the serious business of getting the gold ore of the mine. All went well at first, but then a strange thing happened. The vein of gold disappeared. They had come to the end of the rainbow, and the pot of gold was no longer there. The brothers continued to pick away, but without success. Finally, they gave up in disgust. They sold their equipment and claim rights for a few hundred dollars, and took the train back home. Now the man who bought the claim hired an engineer to examine the rock strata of the mine. The engineer advised him to continue digging in the same spot where the former owners had left off. And three feet deeper, the new owner struck gold. A little more persistence and the two brothers would have been millionaires themselves. There is gold in you, too. Do you need to dig three feet farther? Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. A man married a very beautiful girl. After marriage, they were living happily. Man admired her beauty and loved her very much. But after few months, Wife came to know that she was suffering from a skin disease, and because of that gradually she will lose her beauty. Knowing this, wife started thinking to herself, what if I become ugly, my husband would start hating me. I won't be able to tolerate his hatred. Meanwhile, one day her husband had to go out of town for some work. When he was returning home after finishing his work, he met with an accident. He lost both his eyes in that accident. In spite of all this, their married life continued to progress normally. Time passed and wife completely lost her beauty due to her skin disease. She turned ugly, but her blind husband couldn't see it. So it didn't affect their married life. He kept on loving her like always. One day his wife died. Now, he was sad and alone. He decided to leave that city. He completed all funeral rites for his wife. Next day, when he was about to leave, his neighbor saw him and went to him and said, How will you be able to live without support of your wife? You can't see and your wife was always there for you to support you and help you for many years. It would be difficult for you. Husband replied, friend, I am not blind. I was just pretending to be blind. Because when my wife came to know about her disease, I realized that she was bothered by it and scared. If my wife had known that I could see her ugliness, it would have hurt her more than her illness. She was very good wife and I just wanted to keep her happy. That's why for all these years, I pretended to be blind. To be happy, sometimes, we should close our eyes to shortcomings of each other.